The Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129 presents Sounds from the Spires with Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, Music Director of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Hello and welcome to Sounds from the Spires. This is Dr. Jennifer Pasquale and you're listening to The Catholic Channel on Sirius XM 129. And today we have a very special guest. He's on the phone today, but uh, he travels all over the world, so it's very tough to catch him. So I'm really grateful he's able to join us today. It's David Briggs, world-famous organist, who is with us today. Uh, Good morning, David. Hi, Jenny. How are you? I'm in deepest Philadelphia, actually not too far from you. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Thank you so much for for being with us, and I know you have a big concert. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, And you're in Philadelphia for a, a Kimmel Center concert, right? That's right. Actually, it's on, on Wednesday at 7.30. It's a kind of uh, very similar concert to one that I took part in at the Royal Albert Hall in London in May 2018. They called it Grand Organ Celebration. And what it is, the three of us is Olivier Latry, the yes. organist of Notre Dame, and Wayne Marshall, who's a wonderful organist and also a fabulous jazz musician and who conducts and performance all over the world and myself and we 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 put this on in the Abbott Hall um, 18 months back and we had just under 4,400 people there it was the most incredible concert so um, uh, Kimmel Center will get on to this and we're going to be uh, performing on 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 uh, on Wednesday evening it's it's funny because you know we had to combine four different schedules mine Olivier's, Wayne's, mm-hmm. and of course the Kimmel Center. Yes. And Ash Wednesday <laughs> is the only night that we could find, which is rather bizarre in a way because our concert is, well, we're going to start being penitent on Thursday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure people will still come out in droves to listen to you all because you all are so I fabulous. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Plus, we people. Do actually, we're going to do a reenaction of. The, the, the finale of the concert was, was really something which I think musically was very interesting. We had two Steinways wow. uh, end-to-end and the Royal Albert Hall organ, and we improvised a three-movement concerto for two pianos and organ. And it was it brought the house down, actually. I mean, it was so exciting. You know, when the music is improvised, there's a kind of knife-edge quality to it, in a way, and we're all sort of communicating through our ears, in a way, and... It was something very unique to that occasion. So we're looking forward to to reenacting that in Philadelphia on Wednesday. That's fantastic. Um, I wish that uh, we could have uh, advertised that before the fact. This one, this this program is going to air this weekend, but um, uh, right. I, I know that it's going to be fabulous, and I wish I could hear it there there in Philadelphia. But for those who are just joining us, uh, David Briggs is a world famous organist. He's in residence at, here in New York at Saint John the Divine Cathedral, the biggest cathedral in the um, Western Hemisphere, if not the world, um, and fabulous, and plays all sorts of repertoires a phenomenal composer, improviser, and uh, it was really great to see you in Oakland last month at the Conference of Roman Catholic Cathedral Musicians. So that was really special to be able to see Wasn't you. Wasn't that a wonderful there. conference? I mean, it was very convivial, uh, but very educational, and just to be based in that extraordinary cathedral, yeah. uh, which is just 10 years old, and uh, remarkable acoustics and fabulous Lithuano organ. Yeah, that was a, a, a fabulous three days yes. in Oakland. And uh, great uh, to be with you for those days and learn from you and uh, listen to you and uh, teaching the improv to some of our colleagues. So that was great. Yeah. Thank you very much. I always think when I do these classes, though, that I come away learning more from the participants and uh, than I'm able to give to them. It's funny. Interesting. When you're, uh, you know, when you're teaching, it, it, you pick up things from other people and it actually makes you examine what you do yourself, I think. And that's a kind of healthy thing really so. yeah and uh you're giving a concert a big one here in new york on Dece- excuse me march 10 and you're going to be premiering yeah. the world premiere of your uh, transcription of brahms first symphony tell us about this and yeah. what made what drove you to do this i know you do so many transcriptions but why brahms first well i mean i just always adored the brahms symphony since since i was like 13 or 14 year old i remember having the there was a box set on Deutsche Grammophon with a Berlin fill with Carrier, and I I practically wore it out. I mean, this is just <laughs> such fabulous music. And the first, uh, I, I've had my eye on transcribing this for the organ actually for many years because I think it's 
it works really really well in a big building mm-hmm. and it's 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 so grand it's brilliant it's extremely emotional and very poetic at times and i mean on my iphone obviously i have like everybody else you know itunes and sure. i have a list of favorites and actually the majority of of the, the, the pieces that i listen to the most on my on my phone are orchestral huh. I, i've always really loved the the core symphonic repertoire from the 19th and 20th centuries particularly uh-huh. and so i suppose really for the last a couple of decades i've i've had a lot of fun sort of recasting some of the great orchestral music for my own mm. instrument i mean primarily uh the symphonies of gustav mahler which yes. i've i've always really adored actually first of all from within inside the orchestra because i i used to be a, be a viola player in the national ah, okay. of great britain when i was growing up and uh-huh. it was my first dose of mahler when i was 15 years old and I remember we performed Mahler 5 in the Albert Hall in the proms and it kind of took me over. And once this music gets into your veins, Mm -hmm. it's it's there for life in a way. It's very hard to shake off. Yes, and that's why you've transcribed them. (laughs) uh, Yeah, and it's obviously a very major operation. I've transcribed about six of the symphonies now. Wow. And it takes, I mean, something like the Resurrection Symphony, the, the second, it took about nine months. And I I just simply go to the orchestral score and just do one bar at a time and take it down to its essential components of the music and then recast it so that it's it's very successful actually as an organ piece. Sure. You know, it's I think there's very little point in a way of of trying to make a caricature of the orchestra. You know, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just because something says clarinet or trumpet <laughs> or oboe uh-huh. in the in the original it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to replicate that precisely so i i sort of recast the music and uh, make it sound hopefully successful in its new guise sure um how long did it take you to transcribe brahms first about five months uh-huh. something like that i mean it's you know it's not obviously as gargantuan as the as the Mahler symphonies brahms one is about what 40, 44, 45 minutes long. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I would say that it works superbly well on the organ. I mean, it's, it's and especially in in St. John the Divine, where, you know, the, the acoustic of the cathedral just adds so much to the to the flavor. And it's the, the end of the symphony particularly is is just wonderful yes. with a, you know, you play the last chord you take your hands off and then it reverberates around for about 10 seconds. That's right. Uh huh. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. And we'll hear that reverberation a little bit later in the show, but it's, it's really amazing to, for someone like you who is so busy, you're on the road all the time and planes. And I see that you, you've done a lot of work on airplanes and <laughs> how you get all of Actually, this done. That's, that's true. I mean, I'm at the moment working on a transcription of, Ray Vaughan Williams' Fifth Symphony, it's just been commissioned by the Vaughan Williams Society, huh. which I'm going to record uh, in England in November. But So I, uh, I do this, I actually do a lot of work in, in hotel rooms as well, <laughs> you know, because inevitably, if you're playing a concert, then it, it's sort of normal to turn up a couple of days sure. in advance right. in order to set the organ up. So I, I had four hours on the Kimmel Center Dobson organ last night. Uh-huh. But today, it's a a pretty free day, apart, of course, from the joy of talking to you, John. Oh, well, thank you. you. <laughs> so, you know, I just sit, sit in the hotel and get on with myself. Actually, all the composing I do and all the arranging, it's, it's all on a laptop. So, you know, I'm pretty pretty portable. So hotel, hotel rooms, airport <laughs> lounges, uh, and uh, American Airlines yes. flights, uh, it's, yeah, it, it's a fun way to pass the time as well. That's fantastic. And so your March 10 concert at St. John the Divine, that's um, 7.30 p.m., and it's on the Upper West yeah. Side, 112th Street. You're also playing the uh, Debussy um, and the yeah. Elgar. Are those also transcribed by you? They're not. Actually, the Elgar is a transcription by an English organist, George Robertson Sinclair. And it's it's a piece which is really kind of full of 
British swagger and <laughs> is very aristocratic, very very splendid and in a way not dissimilar to the Brahms. I mean, we know that Elgar loved Brahms's orchestral music, uh, uh-huh. but it's a big sort of firework in a way to start the concert. And then the Debussy was transcribed by a French organist called Alexandre Cellier. Debussy never, unfortunately, he never wrote a single note of organ music, uh-huh. which is, you know, it's a real shame for us. But sure. again, this, I mean, it's, it's kind of one of the most delicious and mm-hmm. haunting and, I mean, supremely expressive pieces of musical uh, impressionism that, that, that was ever written back in, I think it was 1894. Uh, so it's around about the time when St. John the Divine was, was being built, you know, that they, they started it in the 1890s. But it's, it's really ravishingly beautiful. Uh, again, especially in the acoustic because all the sound world is it's very atmospheric yes. and uh, lush and uh, so I, I'm very much looking forward to <laughs> performing this piece. Yeah and so you can get tickets by going to www.st that's st st john divine dot org uh, calendar that's right. yeah and you can look on there and uh, fish through the website and you can find that the tickets are $25 and david is giving a uh, pre concert talk about the works beforehand yes. and so uh, he's the concert the pre concert talk has become quite popular actually it's it's a nice way where you know members of the audience can get a little bit of of insight into the music that's being performed uh-huh. in the concert and it's a nice way that i can communicate with the audience and sure communicate my enthusiasm for the for the pieces I'm going to be playing and I mean, really what I do I mean especially with this Brahms project which has been a pretty large undertaking it took, it took about a year to first of all tra- transcribe the symphony and then there's a small matter of learning how to play it <laughs> <laughs> so it's just been on the boil for, for, for about a year uh-huh. so I, I, I go into quite a lot of detail about the sort of um, you know, compositional mechanisms that I use in terms of translating the music from the orchestral score mm-hmm. into into an organ piece, and talk a little bit about the kind of way that I use the stops to sure. to replicate the orchestra and and so on. So it's it's a sort of a bit of an inside view, but it, I always like to include quite a lot of humour as well. So. Sure. But that's at mm-hmm. six thirty on the tenth of tenth of March and. Um, lasting for about 30, 35 minutes before the concert. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so that's David Briggs, our guest today. He is performing on March 10, Tuesday, at St. John the Divine on the Upper West Side, 112th Street and Amsterdam Avenue, 7.30, the Brahms' first uh, symphony transcription of his own, as well as some Elgar and Debussy, uh, with a pre-talk, pre-concert lecture at 6.30 p.m. And go to www.stjohndivine.org and you can find tickets there. Um, Speaking of the Brahms first, let's listen to a little bit of uh, David's transcription. He was kind enough to record little snippets and so we'll play a little of that for you now.
That's a little bit of the Requiem movement of the Requiem Aeternum of David Briggs, and that's on the CD, Requiem, an organ concerto, Ave Maria, of David Briggs. And go to his website. It's david briggsorg and you can find any of his recordings there. You can see pictures, find out when his concerts are. They're all over the globe, um, just about every week almost. And uh, you can find out how to get those CDs there, uh, any of them. He has over 30. That's amazing. So uh, great organist, David Briggs, who's our guest today. Thank you, David. Very much for yeah. having me on your wonderful program. <laughs> yes, and, um, and in addition to um, uh, transcribing wonderful or, uh, symphonies and whatnot, you're also a fabulous composer of um, organ works, uh, uh, chamber works, orchestral works, and and also choral works, and we do a couple of them at St. Patrick's, so it, uh, the choir loves them. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's so kind of you. It was interesting listening to the Requiem that you just said. I think I composed that in 2003. Uh-huh. And um, I sort of got to the stage now where uh, it, c- composition is a little bit like a compulsion. I mean, I, I can't not compose. And it's it's the most weird thing because you you sit at a uh, you know the table, you put your headphones on, select the harp sound, which is like a a kind of spell checker in a way. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm one of these composers who I think the last time I used a pencil was about 2002, so wow. maybe 18 years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, some some composers say, well, it's not proper composition unless you you feel the graphite touching the manuscript paper. But for me, the music that I write is, is exactly the same. Uh, you know, if I, if I use the, use the computer, go, so I go straight in. Um, but I still, to this day, don't really know where it all comes from. It's, it's, um, I, I think since I was very young, since I was like a six or seven year old, I've, I've always loved to, to improvise a lot and to, to make friends with, with the keyboard in a, in a sense. So I just, see it and um i never seem to have writer's block i just come comes from somewhere outside uh-huh. and uh com- comes into my ear and i just write it down and hope for the best so <laughs> that uh, impulsivity of, of creational uh process i guess well that's good for us in the organ world <laughs> uh david is your requiem uh dedicated to a particular person or written for someone it was commissioned actually by Ray and Beth Chenault, who ah, okay. were the, the they were on the music team of uh, the um, All Saints Episcopal Church down in Atlanta, mm-hmm. Georgia. And uh, it's uh, I read it actually when there was a lot going on in my life, a lot of uh, change, um, some some pretty major surgery just when I was 39 years old, and uh, you know I moved to the states and. Uh, Imagine I met in 2004. So there were, there, there were a lot of big, major changes. And I think that sometimes uh, good creation can come out of, you know, uh, of, of change in one's personal circumstances in a way. So sure. uh, I, I think that is one of those pieces. That, that Requiem, I think, comes from somewhere that's quite deep inside me in a way. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. Uh, I, I always love to hear it. Right. It's a beautiful work. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. It's, uh, it's, it's actually been done quite a bit now. You know, a lot of choirs, are, of course, in the Foray Requiem and the Duo Fair Requiem, but this uh, makes a, a kind of uh, count, counterfort to those two, I think. I mean, it takes sort of elements out of Foray and definitely out of elements out of, out of Duo Fair as well. I mean, mm-hmm. as a composer, I suppose the thing that I, I think is most important that is that the music should sound really beautiful and you know, it should be reinforced by generous harmonies and uh, sure. that it, it should be melodic and, uh, and and sort of rich in a way. So that's, uh-huh. that's the kind of music that I've, I've always loved to improvise. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, you know, I like my big chords. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of my chords have um, seven, eight, nine, ten notes in them. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> It's a bit like going to a restaurant where there's, there's lots of choice and lots of lots of uh, rich nourishment. I That's hope. That's right. <laughs> 
Um, so again, our guest today, David Briggs, is going to be giving a concert on Tuesday, March 10, at St. John the Divine Cathedral. That's at 112th Street and Amsterdam Avenue, the big building up there, uh, 7.30 p.m. And he's giving a pre-concert talk at 6.30 p.m. And his Brahms First Symphony transcription is going to be premiered. It's a world premiere. And he's also playing Definitely. works, yes, of Elgar and Debussy. So go to, please, uh, Saint, that's S-T, stjohndivine.org, and you can get tickets there. Um, and they're $25 a piece, and uh, he's a great performer. Jenny, I could just say a little, a little bit about yes. the, uh, the instrument, actually, because I'm sure as many of your listeners realize, of course, there was a the devastating fire in Notre Dame last April on the 15th. But we, too, at St. John the Divine, had a fire. That's right. In, uh, it was on Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday. Uh, uh-huh. during the 9 o'clock mass. The New York Fire Department were absolutely fabulous. They were there in about, I think, eight minutes. Mm-hmm. So the fire only burnt for, it was in a little basement room uh, down, down in the crypt. And I, I think it only burnt for a matter of just a few minutes. But unfortunately, we did have quite a lot of smoke which means that our great Aeolian Skinner organ on the, either side of the of the great choir does have some, some dust in it. And so the organ is out of commission yes. at the moment. We're hoping to welcome it back uh, around about Easter 2021 with a bit of luck. But mm-hmm. So in the moment, we're using this uh, remarkable uh, digital organ by the Walker Technical Company out mm-hmm. of Zionsville, Pennsylvania, so these clips of the Brahms that you're hearing, in actual fact, there's not a single organ pipe playing. It's all a extremely sophisticated computer and right. uh, many, many speakers. And, you know, I would say that in our acoustic, it's... Uh, it works very well. <laughs> it's very impressive. Uh-huh. But for the audience, there's an added, a, a really added sort of plus that the, the, the organ console itself is right down at the front of the nave. Mm -hmm. And we have a big screen uh, by the side of the console with, uh, and we have a camera sort of focusing on my hands and and feet so everybody can see what's going on. And we put the seats for the audience in a huge semicircle Uh um, with quite a bit of space in between them. So (laughs) it's a little bit like sitting in business class on an airplane. (laughs) It's, and you get a full view of the performer. And of course with, you know, in most cathedrals, you go to hear the music and you can't see the performer, right. um, which I, I think is a real shame in it a way, is. because you wouldn't go to a violin recital or a piano recital and put the put their pianist behind a curtain. But anyway, it's on the divine for the moment while we're using our temporary digital instruments. Uh, everything's on, on view. And it's, it's quite interesting, I think, to, to watch all the hands and the feet and right. you know, everything that goes into to, to playing the organ. I think it can be... Uh, quite fascinating. Especially for those folks who have no idea how the instrument works, and it's a really well, that, a learning experience exactly for them. Exactly right. Yeah. I mean, people have, I think, no concepts about the, the Complexity. sheer sort of uh, exercise <laughs> of, of playing the organ. I mean, it's, you know, it really is aerobic exercise. It's, it's a, playing Brahms 1 is a bit like going to the gym for 45 minutes. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but a lot more it. enjoyable. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. And so, again, go to St. That's S-T, stjohndivine.org, uh, and you can get tickets there. It's March 10 at 7.30 p.m., and a, a pre-concert talk by David Briggs, our guest today, at 6.30 p.m. He's playing the Brahms first and some Elgar and Debussy. And, uh, David, so you uh, mentioned that you played viola. Which came first for you? Was it viola or the organ? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I... I mean, you know, for a while when I was growing up, they sort of, um, they went hand in hand. And I was a violinist before I was a viola player. And I, I learned violin up to the age of about 13. Uh-huh. And uh, then they decided at the school I was at in England that they, they really needed some, some viola players. So so I switched over to that. And uh-huh. There's something, you know, for me, the, the viola is the most wonderful of the string instruments uh, because... Very often, of course, you sit right in the middle of the texture. You sit in the middle of the harmony. Sure. And rather like a, a fantastic cake, you know, you get all the jams, so, so to speak. That's uh, one of the reasons why, why I love to, to, to play the viola so much. Um, but I, I, when I got to about 20, I suppose, I started doing a lot of conducting. Uh-huh. And there's only a certain amount of time. So since then, I, 
really focused on um, playing the organ, conducting, and, and composing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, how many hours a day do you practice? Just for those who are What listening. a great question. <laughs> I know you well, perform all over the place and you're flying, you're constantly giving concerts, and so you're always preparing yeah. for each concert, but yeah, when you're on an off day or something. <laughs> right. You know, it depends what's coming up. One of, one of the things that I love most about my, my life in New York, I mean, there are many, many things that I love about being in New York, but finally, age 57, I have proper time to practice. <laughs> so I practice around about half the time on uh, well, some friends of ours down in Tribeca have an absolutely gorgeous Steinway concert ground mm -hmm. and they very generously allow me to go in and rehearse there so I, I shut myself in there for three or four hours uh, put the metronome on I do a, a lot of my practice at half speed huh. uh, you know just I suppose it's I remember talking to an opera singer a few months ago about well how do you how do you go about memorizing these colossal parts uh -huh. you know in in Wagner and Strauss or whatever, whatever it is and their, their answer really kind of interested me because it's, it's sort of the same as mine it's just, it's just repeating endlessly and uh, wasn't it Woody Allen who said 90% of life is just showing up right that's right <laughs> and it's you know practice is a little bit like that you really have to give yourself the kind of bedrock of technique and mm -hmm. muscle memory with your fingers and oral memory with your ears so that uh you, you know you've you've practiced it more than the basic minimum in a way i think sure. isn't there a phrase saying if you're a professional musician you should practice things until you can't get it wrong uh-huh well I mean, that, that's great in in theory it's, it, it really <laughs> works like that but because it's always a process but um, it's one of the things i i love to do most actually is uh is, is practice. So I practice on the piano and also there's a beautiful organ in Holy Trinity Roman Catholic Church oh, yes. on 82nd yes. and Broadway the in Manhattan. And mm -hmm. a, a beautiful letter on an organ. Uh -huh. I, so I, I go and practice there quite, quite often when I'm in New York as well. But for a concert, I mean, something like this uh, at, at Kimmel Center where, where I am at the moment in Philadelphia, it's about six or seven hours and it's you know, when you go to practice, it's not to to learn the notes because right. hopefully you've done that. You have to you've done you know that. it by then, yes. <laughs> Many months before that, it's to make a kind of symbiotic relationship with the instrument because every sure. organ really is different. And uh, even on the largest organs, and, you know, there's some pretty colossal instruments in the U.S., the more and more I perform, the more and more it seems as though there's only really one solution at any given moment in the in the time, which is going to express what you want to say as, as a musician. So you're always trying to find that ideal sound. Mm -hmm. That, uh, and I suppose the goal is uh, that as a performer, you find registrations or find sounds that that nobody else has found before. So you're you're really kind of probing probing the instrument. So it's a it's a kind of two way thing in a way. I mean, you like a conductor, you mm -hmm. know. Yes. You, you're in charge of the performance, of course. You're, uh, or, or somebody flying the aeroplane. You're, you're the captain. You're actually responsible. But these instruments have uh, hugely different personalities, and um, especially with some of the great organs here and in in France and Germany, the historic organs there, they, they can be great teachers mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, it's I think it's very good to have an open mind in a way. Yeah, very well put, very well said. Uh, again, our guest, our guest today is David Briggs. He will be giving a concert on March 10 at 7.30 p.m. at St. John the Divine Cathedral on 112th in Amsterdam. Uh, Pre-concert talk, pre talk at 6.30 uh, about the Brahms First uh, Symphony that he has transcribed and also some Elgar and Debussy. And go to St. 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 John Divine dot org for tickets. Um, and let's play a little bit of the end of that Brahms first. And again, this is David's own transcription.
that's a little bit of the uh, Mahler Second Symphony, uh, the Resurrection Symphony in C minor. That's the first movement, a little bit of it. Transcribed by our guest today, David Briggs. Phenomenal transcriptions. And you've done several of Mahler symphonies and other symphonies. And uh, wow. <laughs> uh, just go Thank to. Thank you. Yeah. Go to David's website, uh, David. Uh, hyphen briggs.com and you can find all of those CDs there and all the glorious work he's done uh, and pictures, upcoming concerts if you happen to be somewhere in the, in the United States or around the world that uh, he's, he is at at the same time, go to his concert or if you happen to be okay. here in New York on March 10 at St. John the Divine uh, on 112th Street in Amsterdam he will be performing his world premiere of his transcription of Brahms' first symphony, along with some Elgar and uh, Debussy. So go to Saint Sounds St. Great. Yeah, St. Yeah, John, John Divine. Go ahead. in there and say, you, um, you mentioned uh, davidbriggs.com. In fact, it's david-briggs.org. Oh, I'm sorry, and dot org. Dot org. <laughs> <laughs> right. org, you know, org, as we all know. That's right, organ. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Yeah, but fabulous, yeah. fabulous musician you. you are. Yeah, uh, and you have played all over the world, um, David. Uh, it, and this is a hard question. What, or maybe you have two or three or ten. <laughs> what is your favorite organ in the world? Oh, that's an easy question. Is it <laughs> okay? It's that's uh, an easy answer, I should say. It's uh, and it's it's been the same for me since I was about probably ten years old, huh. and that's the great organ of Notre Dame in Paris. Ah, which, uh -huh. You know, there were two miracles happened, I think, back uh, on the on the 15th of April mm -hmm. when they had that terrible, terrible yeah. inferno. The first miracle that happened is that nobody was killed. That's right. This was really an inc incredible thing. And actually, uh, Olivier Latry, who's a, a very good friend of mine, who's one of the, the three organists there, told me yesterday that, I mean, those firefighters, you know, who went up into the West Towers, uh, they really risked very much, risked their lives. Mm -hmm. But had they not done it, if they'd have waited an, apparently another 20 minutes and uh, the, those iconic West Towers might well have collapsed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's uh, the wonderful thing, I think, is that Notre Dame will come back. Yes. And the, uh, the, the first miracle is that nobody was killed. That's the right. second miracle is that the great organ survived mm -hmm. and i mean you know i saw these pictures as we all did but watching on the news and so on and just thinking oh my lord right uh, you know the, the the greatest organ in the world has just gone got gone up in in flames but it didn't and i mean it's obviously covered in this horrible dust they can't turn it on uh and uh, so it's going to be a few years nobody quite knows whether mr macron's five-year project will happen i mean I think it could. Uh, it, it just depends on, on on how things go along. But I mean, can you imagine the opening mass of that building? I mean, I really want to be there, don't you? Oh, Wouldn't sure. that be an incredible thing? Of course, yes. After, after that building is, is uh, you know, rehallowed. I mean, it's, for me, the greatest of all the French Gothic, Gothic cathedrals. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's... A long way to to answer your question, which is which is the best organ in the world, and, <laughs> but for me, it's Notre Dame in Paris. Yes, beloved by everybody, and we all pray for its uh, quick return. Um, as I know, absolutely. Yes, the organist there, of course, and you're performing with one of them tomorrow night uh, at Kimmel Center. Um, That's the, right. Yeah, yes, Olivier. Exactly. With, with Olivier, actually, <laughs> which is it's it's always uh, it's, it's going to be a, a very fun fun event and. We're also performing um, Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, actually, with my, my very good friend Wayne Marshall, who's uh -huh. a phenomenal uh, pianist and great expert in Gershwin and Bernstein and, uh, you know, all this wonderful Amer American music. So I'm going to be the orchestra <laughs> on the Kimmel Center Dobson organ. And it's um, we did this at the Albert Hall, actually, at our great, uh, what was it called? The Grand Organ Celebration in May 2018. And uh -huh. it, it really brought the house down organ and piano with the um rhapsody, rhapsody in blue all we can't do as organists of course is do the the very infamous clarinet 
Glissando in bar one of Rhapsody in the Blue, you know, which <laughs> we're Rhapsody in Blue, which starts on the bottom F down in the in the low register of the clarinet, and then there's a kind of a bit like an elevator going up from the, the first floor up to the fiftieth uh, on on the clarinet. So what we were obliged to do on the organ is um, just play a, a very fast three octave scale, um, <laughs> and. <laughs> Or oh, perhaps we should hire a clarinetist. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Maybe. That would be fun. There are a lot of there are a lot of good clarinetists in Philadelphia. That's you know, right. We, maybe <laughs> give them a call and say, "Well, are you free tomorrow night?" And they say, "Well, what would you like me to do?" Well, Rhapsody in Blue, but we only need you for the first bar. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Union be, scale. <laughs> no, that would be that would be a wicked thing. Yeah, I wish we were broadcasting this before your performance tomorrow, but you can catch. Uh, David at St. John the Divine on uh, Tuesday, May, excuse me, March 10 at 7.30 p.m. He's premiering his world premiere of his transcription of the Brahms First Symphony along with some Elgar and Debussy with a uh, pre-concert talk at 6.30. So go to St. John Divine, stjohndivine.org, and you can get tickets there. And also visit David's website to get his any of his CDs, uh, book him for a concert, uh, find out where he's performing, david-briggs.org. Um, and just, uh, we, we don't have much time left, David. You've been a real delight to speak to. And I know you've been delighting audiences for years, and you, you travel the world, you're constantly on the go. Um, what do you see yourself? I mean, what have you not accomplished in your life that you still wish to accomplish? <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> well, I'm still trying to make myself a better organist. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> it's uh, that's that's about it. I mean, it's you know, it's you never get to a stage really when when you're completely happy w- with what you've done because <laughs> we're all human beings and uh-huh. we're all fallible, but um. That I guess I'm always trying to make sure that every time I perform, it's it's a little bit better than the last time. And, uh-huh. You know, that's that's a hard thing to do. It's 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 tough. But I mean, obviously, you, with experience, I think things changes, and uh, I try and make make sure that my the kind of technical side mm-hmm. of playing the organ. So, in other words, you know, the touch, the the the, the note accuracy, and <laughs> the way that you manage the, the instrument. I, yeah try and make that as seamless as possible you know so that a little bit like a good airline captain he'll steer he'll give you a really fantastic flight and he'll he'll actually steer the aircraft away from from you know bumpy situations kind of thing so i try to make sure that things are are properly prepared i guess i mean (laughs) when the when i started off uh like a lot of young musicians, I think uh-huh. you know, we, my, my thing was kind of razzle dazzle and just try and sort of <laughs> be a little bit blase or whatever. But now you I still think, razzle dazzle. You know, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. But the, the most important thing about about being a performer, I think, is to to really act as an ambassador for the yes. composer. Yes. You know, the composer is more important than you are, right. and uh, I, I like it if people leave the concert different to how they were when they came in you know, uh, very uh-huh. important yes but also they should be really thinking about you know they should be talking about what a fantastic piece that is right. rather than uh, I mean you know obviously if it's well performed that's that's great mm-hmm. um, but for me it's to in a way act as a as, a, as an ambassador for the composer as a salesperson for the, for the composer and uh, I try to I try to project whatever I'm playing that Actually, this is my very favorite piece uh, of music <laughs> uh-huh. in the, in the world, yeah, yeah. and I try to communicate that, and you know, uh, to, to try and sort of underline that fact in a way, and to try and um, try and uh, make, make people happy through music. Yeah. Well, well said, David. I, I really appreciate you spending an hour out of your time today. I know you have a big performance coming up. Uh, but again, go to St. John the Divine on Tuesday, March 10 at 7.30 p.m. to hear David Briggs playing Brahms' first symphony transcription. His own transcription, go to St. John Divine, stjohndivine.org for tickets. David, thank you so much for, for being with us today. And, and um, see pleasure, you soon. Yes. Always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. And thank you to Jackie for fixing her schedule and setting us up. Uh, uh, and stay tuned next week for Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM 129. Everybody have a great week. <laughs>